And welcome once again to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. And now let's uh, uh, go through the newspapers and see what major stories have made the headlines this morning. We're going to be introducing our guests right after that. We're starting this morning with the Punch newspapers. And uh, the big one there says, anti-open grazing law. Federal government backs Herder's planned suit against South governors and police uh, differ, differ rather on enforcement. Nigerians whose rights are violated can go to court, says AGF office. Law difficult to enforce without force headquarters backing, says the police. Also on the punch this morning, COVID-19, World Bank approves $11.5 billion for Nigeria and others. AGF, Kaduna and others may face Lagos and Rivers on value-added tax appeal. Senate, senior advocates disagree over INEX power on e-transmission of results. Also on the punch, Buhari lands in Addis Ababa for Ethiopia's Prime Minister's inauguration. Man carrying gun in viral video, Army Rector, not Defence Minister, says an aide. And also four Lagos Church worshippers killed, the mountain flag as electricity cable snaps. Army begins three special operations against kidnapping, uh, kidnapping rather, banditry and others. And also, Ondo lecturer kidnapped on deplorable Akure Adu Highway. Abductors demand 10 million naira. Anambra killings. Two gone down. DSS office burnt. Teaching hospital invaded. And uh, that's uh, most of the stories we've taken on the punch this morning. Let's see what we can find on the leadership newspapers. It says there, tension in southeast as gunmen set DSS, FRSC offices and vehicles ablaze. Joey Bukui's uh, Newe residence also burnt. Five killed in Kaduna and Anambra. Military begins new offensive in southern states, Benue, and uh, troops repel attack on repentant terrorists. We can also find on the leadership this morning, vandalism threatens vessel safety on Nigerian waters. Opposition unfair to APC and PNB, says uh, PGF. In 2023, value-added tax, top agenda of Southeast Governor's meeting. We can also find on the leadership this morning, CBN to boost wheat production. And um, Laddie Williams dies of COVID-19 at 74. Moving on from the leadership, let's see what we can find on the daily independent newspapers. It says here, Nigeria can raise $1 trillion from securitized assets. Analysts say it shouldn't have borrowed. Forex ban on 41 items misplaced priorities. Tension in the PDP over new zoning plan. Stakeholders move against governors. North Central to produce national chairman. And it says also how Mackinde and other governors swayed PDP chairmanship to north. We can also find here NEC Metro open presidential ticket this week. 2023, Yahya Bello Dom's presidential bid lobbies APC leaders for VP slot. And also 2023 presidential ticket threatening APC's unity, says the DG of PGF. Value added tax, Adamawa, Kaduna, Plateau, back FIRS to join in appeal against Rivers and Lagos. And uh, I think we can quickly squeeze in the Daily Trust newspapers lastly. Ghanaians resume hostility against Nigerian traders. 3,000 businessmen threatened, over 3 billion naira lost. And says government must act on legal, political and economic technicalities. The Diaspora Commission says we are not aware of recent onslaught. An Amber politicians go into hiding as IPOB unleashes terror. And also worry over acute shortage of airworthiness uh, inspectors in airports. VAT row, more northern states team up with the FIRS. All right, these are the big ones that we can find um, on the papers this morning. We'll say good morning to Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my brother. How Wait. was the weekend? It was fantastic. Thanks for joining us on the morning. All one. right. Is your sister by your side? Uh, no, she's not. I'm all by myself this morning. Okay. All right. So, so let's let's, let's start. Let's um, yeah, let, let's start the conversation with um, something that I just read on the Daily Trust. It says Anambra politicians go into hiding as IPOB unleashes terror. Let's start with that. There was also news of. Uh, Joey Bokwe's house uh, gets an attack and burnt in, in Newe over the weekend. And of course, the DSS and FRSC facilities also set ablaze. Let's start with what's going on in the southeast. Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, 
what is going on in the South, this is a very frightening thing. It's a thing that uh, most Nigerians do not wish that uh, this happen. Uh, it also portends very, very serious danger, not just to the Nigerian nation, but to the people in the South. In fact, it's where today my heart is bleeding for the people in the South. The athletes can engage in their normal commercial activities. Farmers cannot go to the farm. Children have been denied the opportunity to see for their medical exam. These are not what you wish for any community to start experiencing. But it's a very difficult time for us as a people. But you see, the people in authority, the politicians, at the local government level, at the federal government level, and the state level, are not helping matters. Rather than engaging dialogue, they are beating the drums of war. Uh, you take, for example, the speech that was delivered by Mr. President on the 61st independence and the of the country. In my humble opinion, that speech is not conciliatory at all. That speech doesn't uh, look like uh, the federal government is ready to go into negotiation and dialogue and find solutions to what is happening in the South. And I'll say the time to start to number the challenges that we have in the South East. It's not for any of the Nigerian courts to handle or solve or to provide solutions for or to adjudicate upon. I also do know from my reading of history that uh, military solution or the deployment of uh, military arsenal to stamp out the activities of whoever may be engaged in the skirmishes that we have in the South East is never a solution at all. And the graphic example to be found in Afghanistan for more than 20 years, all the big powers went to Afghanistan took on the Raqqaq Taliban money, and the one randomly defeated. The Soviet Union was defeated, America has been defeated, the European Union has been defeated. It is not the might of your army and the weapon that your army carries that will give you victory. The path to peace in the South is peace on the negotiation table. And the earlier the federal government and the politicians who have been so uncalled in saying that they will stamp out, they will look like they deal, they will teach them the language they understand, will sooner than later find out that they are just dreaming. Look at even the Boko Haram insurgency. It's been 10 years now. Have we been able to wipe them out? Have we been able to find solutions to that challenge? Please and please, let's uh, go to the negotiation table. A referendum in the party to read the most appropriate thing to do for now. All right, but I, I want you to speak on, you know, why, um, because from what the Daily Trust reports, it says Anambra politicians go into hiding. Um, do you think that this might be, the, the direction might be changing, and it seems like it's an attack on politicians and people who seem to be beneficiaries of, uh, of government? Um, because, of course, if you look at the um, um, attack on uh, Chike Akunyili and also, well, his very, very sad killing, and also, you know, there's uh, some other uh, politician who was attacked also in Newi Ongpo, um, also um, sometime last week. The uh, video clips yeah. of um, his uh, Toyota Hilux, you know, that had been damaged. Uh, you know, so, so yeah. do, do you see this as a different narrative entirely? Well, it is unfortunate. Some of those attacks that we have mentioned, say for example, the attack on Dr. Kili. To the best of my knowledge, Dr. Kili is not a politician, he is a medical practitioner and a philanthropist, and a man who is uh, very, very committed to the Igbo cause. So, if you have that kind of a man being cheaply killed, and I was told he was still alongside some other eight people. After I was coming back from where he went to receive an award, a posthumous award, on behalf of, uh, of the wife. This death could be described as a kind of collateral damage 
He may not have been the intended uh, 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 target of uh, those two fields, uh, but to find that when mayhem, when bandits, is such that we have seen the South is uh, going on, uh, at least anybody safe. Because those who are carrying out this attack will not ask you questions before they unleash mayhem on you. For some of these other politicians like Igbo Kwe and the rest of them, you and I, if you have been reading the authorities and all that, you will realize that they have been making very, very inflammatory uh, speeches. But this is not to say that uh, whoever may be behind this mayhem should go on burning the properties of those who are opposed to their cause. Because what is happening in the Southeast today would be like it's a kind of self destruction. If you start burning your own property, if you start denying your own people access to their farms, access to their markets and all that, you are in the way already weakly there before even the external force comes to take them out. That is not a good strategy for you to get whatever goal or to reach whatever destination that you are trying to be. So for that reason, I will want to say that whoever may be behind this show, please stop the attack on the individuals, even on institutions. Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, Gandhi in India have taught us that it is possible to achieve whatever goals that we want to achieve, especially the goals of independence, especially the goals of freedom, especially the goals of justice without engaging in uh, violence. And what does it profit in man? When you set your own house on fire just because you merely want to kill a rat or a rodent that has been disturbing you within that house. So to that extent, I am not in support of the attack on this private individual. But it is not impossible that the attacking persons are trying to ensure that they cripple all the state infrastructure and facilities in the southeast so that it becomes impossible to hold an election uh, in a number of states and in the South East uh, in 2023. Because I forces have never eaten their desire to ensure that uh, this full in 2023 and the forthcoming another election does not take place. And it's not peculiar to the South East alone. I have seen even the authentic leader saying that, uh, look, election is not the main issue now. What we should see, see down to this is pushing and restructure the country before we start talking about the uh, uh, election. But the joy for quiz of this was, I, I have, I mean, my sympathy to them, for some other, for the Akili family, my sympathy to them too. But for Boyo to Kwe in particular, he should please not add fuel to the flame that is already burning in the, in the South, which is inflammatory of the Okay, all right. Uh, we'll move away from security challenges now. We might come back. But let's now move to the value-added tax controversy. It says on the Daily Independent, uh, Adamawa, Kaduna, and Plateau back FIRS, um, and of course to join an appeal against Rivers and Lagos. Uh, I believe all your state has also, you know, um, tried to get in, itself involved in that suit also. Uh, but, you know, let, let's get your views on that one. It's starting to seem like it is a northern states against, you know, the southern states in the... Uh, the suit concerning value added tax. Uh, it is shocking to me what is happening in the area of this uh, value added uh, uh, tax. I would think that um, if legal states, if uh, river states want to start collecting their own bags, the other states should be happy and should also be enthusiastic. To be, able to be collecting their own bad food and then probably paying a percentage to the center to the federal government. For the certain states in the north are opposed to the moves that are made by river states and the moves that are made by local states. This out the signal that the bad issue that we are talking about that uh, is not being uh, distributed on merit. That certain countries have advantage or certain states have advantage over some of these other states where the bulk of the past is being generated. Otherwise, why would they be opposed to states collecting back, just like the personal income, income tax? After all, if what Lagos and Rivers are doing, 
Eventually, the case to us, and then, in the Supreme Court, as I expect that it will end up in the Supreme Court, not the state are likely to benefit. Because in my own opinion, like I've always said, there is no state that is not viable in Nigeria. The challenge has always been that certain persons or certain states have been too indolent in uh, engaging in very rigorous uh, collection and mapping out strategy for internally, for a viable internally generated revenue. Everybody is comfortable with the handout that is coming from Abuja, with the handout that is coming from the petroleum uh, uh, phase in the traditional market, with the value added that, that is coming from some of these uh, many, uh, states and all that. And we can continue like that as a nature, for example, for, for forever. For example, oil is no longer selling as it used to sell in the international market because the whole world is now looking at alternative energy. Clean energy, not voting for oil. So why would any of the states in the north be opposed to this? It baffles me as a person. And more importantly, too, the issue of fact, in my own bull opinion, just like the challenges that we have in the south is, it's not also a matter for the court to decide. Not at all. And I would have expected the federal government with the state government to set up a committee of experts to review, to look at these problems of that and make recommendations that will be to the benefit of every person. Because when you say you go to court, are the people in court experts in the in, uh, in economic or uh, uh, taxation, these are laymen who know the principles of law. At best, they might ask an amicus courier from Esther to come and address them. And by the time those uh, uh, amicus courier, Esther comes to address the Supreme Court, even the Court of Appeal, they are speaking economic language, which the court will not understand. But at the end of the day, we won't find an amicable solution to this problem. And it will be lingering up for, 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 for so long, undermining the peace and stability of the nation. So, I would appeal to the federal government to quickly set up a committee of experts comprising of economics, lawyers, sociology, social scientists, tax experts, and uh, welfare people who will be able to advise the government and make adequate proposals as regards how the issue of this part uh, uh, can be adequately reformed in the best interest of both the federal government, the state government, and even the local government. As it is today, there is no justice in the collection and distribution of that. And we need equity, we need justice. We need to do whatever is right for all the state to be able to stand alone without depending or leaning on any other state or relying on the under that is come from petroleum resources that is inputted on a monthly basis in Africa. Well. Um, what's see how it goes. I think, you know, this is really just mostly about the interpretation of the, what the Constitution says, you know, and what steps must be taken after. Uh, but, of course, we'll follow up and see where this leads us. Let's, let's now go to um, Kogi State, where uh, Governor Yahya Bello is in the news this morning on the Daily Independent Steel. It says Yahya Bello dumps presidential ambition and, of course, is lobbying to be made vice president. It says, I'm yet to make my ambition known, says the governor. So, of course, uh, quickly share your thoughts on that one. It's, it's on the bottom left of the Daily Independent. It says that 2023, Yahya Bello dumps presidential bid, lobbies APC leaders for VP slot. Uh, what are your thoughts, Mr. Kolawole? Uh, honestly speaking, each time I read uh, about Yahya Bello in the paper, when I see him on television, pontificating on good governance and uh, trying to convince Nigerians or telling Nigerians his next ambition of the president or vice president, my heart bleeds. The Ayabili also reminds me of Fayoche during his first time as a governor. The Ayabili reminds me of Bukola Saraki as the governor of Kuala State. Here are people who are well educated. Here are people who are well traveled. Here are people who are so young. Who all of us at hope to play politics the way it should be played. Here are people that we think will be able to bring development and enlightenment into governance into this country. 
For lo and behold, they have all failed us and given a ridicule. So they not too young to rule a strategy and uh, and programs and campaigns and even law that I mean that has been passed to allow more younger people to come into governance. The every law has been governor for more than four years now. What can you really point out in Kogi State as the, the giant uh, developmental site that he has brought to that place? The pensioners are not being paid. Salaries are not being paid. In fact, civil servants have committed suicide because their salaries were not paid. Uh, infrastructure development is new. My friend, the friend that I have in local jobs, he tells me, and most times Yayabelo is never in local jobs. He resides in uh, Abuja, from where he's uh, ruling uh, Kogi. Uh, uh, he ruled Kogi from Abuja. He is more interested in his personal ambition and not nothing with the Spanikai or this of this world and then the active chairman of the APC rather than face the challenges of governance in the uh, cohesion. So if a man has performed that poorly, what is he bringing on the table? What is the presentation? What is the banner? Well, what is the achievement? There's, there's many people who would have. very high to say, look, this and this are what I've done in cohesion as governor. Mr. And for Kola this reason, you should vote for me as a native president or let me run as a vice president on the platform of our political party. Mr. So Kola Oli, kindly hold on. Let, me, let, let me quickly step in here. Is a monumental project. To Nicola Wale, let me let me quickly step in here. There, there's, I understand that we have a very, I mean, as Nigerians, a very flawed method of, um, you know, scoring performance of governance. Um, you know, people see roads and flyovers and, you know, a few bridges here and there and, you know, and give kudos to a government uh, for trying, um, which is really, really flawed. Um, but, you know, there's still people who would argue that uh, Yahya Bello has not been entirely bad for Kogi State and it seems to have you know, done some work. Um, and of course, you also mentioned pensions uh, just now. There's not very many reports of pensioners being owed in Kogi State. Just just to put, uh, point that out, you know, and of course, you, you, you can continue with your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, Willow is more active on the pages of newspaper and on television and radio than in actual governance in uh, Kogi State. Honestly speaking, it is you media people and that have been paying attention to Yaya Bello. He is a man that we ordinarily should ignore. Honestly, he could be comedian. I just have look at him as a comedian. Not too different from Maliba, a joker. Hmm? Yeah, I, know, I think I enjoy the because of Yaya Bello. He is a monumental target in my own book, you know. Okay, all right. Let's move away from Nigeria now and look at what um, issues uh, seem to be creeping up in Ghana. On the Daily Trust, it says Ghanaians resume hostility against Nigerian traders. 3,000 businesses threatened, over 3 billion naira lost. It says government must act on legal and political and economic technicalities. The Diaspora Commission says we're not aware of recent onslaught. Uh, Mr. Kalawale, it seems we're back to these times again, you know, from South Africa to Ghana where Nigerians and, of course, Nigerians living in those countries, you know, might be dealing with some form of xenophobia? Uh, I will extract my own conversation from the South Africa that you have mentioned. You and I are aware that there is no love lost between the people of South Africa and the Nigerian businessmen in South Africa, despite the fact that Nigeria put all its resources, energy, and international uh, uh, connection to public to uh, show that South Africa got independent. Immediately they became independent from Nigeria, they located there, and started being businesses. But lo and behold, there has been a very huge distrust between the Nigerian people in South Africa and then the indigenous communities. Now the same thing is happening in Ghana. The question we now require to ask ourselves is this. Why is it that we are hated in Ghana? That they treated us like a dog. They were killing us like dogs infected with a rabies. And now the same thing is repeating itself in Ghana today. If we were applying our faith in the manner in which it should be applied, we would be that despised 
as we were despised in Ghana, and now are also despised in South Africa. We also go to some other African countries, West Africa has gone, uh, the Republic, for example, too. I'm also told that there is no love lost between Nigerian uh, businessmen in there, and then the whole uh, community. If there are things that we are not doing right, for God's sake, we as Nigerians, we should continue to correct some of those mistakes. The truth of the matter is that Nigerians are very gregarious people. Wherever they may be, they want to be seen. They never carry themselves with uh, uh, humility. They are never humble. They front their reality, their wealth, and what have you. Do you remember Lucky Dube, the international musician um, in South Africa, a regular musician who was killed not too long ago? Do you know the Southern African people that killed him? Said they thought he was a Nigerian. And that was the reason they killed him, because he was driving a very expensive car and living a very lavish lifestyle. The kind of work you find with us puppy, the kind of work you find uh, with uh, uh, the Obi Kubana and the rest of them. So if Nigerians go to some of these communities and begin to behave, in the way and manner they behave in Nigeria, it should be expected that uh, they will attack hatred to themselves. That is one suspicion. Well, that is one of my suspicions. Furthermore, I am not too sure that most of the embassies that we have in these places and most of the ambassadors that we have in there are doing the right thing. I'm not too sure that they monitor the activities of our people. I'm not sure that they hold meetings with the, old, with the Nigerian community in those places. I'm not sure that they advise them on the proper conduct and with their manner that they should behave when they are in foreign arms. I'm not also sure that when Nigerians are being attacked, that the ambassador and the Nigerian government they resist and insist that the host community should not treat us the way they treat us. Too many times we turn a blind eye, we are never bothered. A Nigerian consulate has been pulled down in Ghana, uh, even when these people knew it was a Nigerian consulate. And what happened? Nothing. Also see the way and manner Nigerian Yahoo boys have all gone to Ghana and are ruining the economy in there, giving the Ghanaian community a bad name internationally. Also look at what the Yahoo Yahoo boys, Nigerian Yahoo Yahoo boys are doing in Dubai and some of these other countries, what they do in the US and all that. These are some of the things that are giving us a bad name that wherever Nigerians find themselves and all that. They are treated with suspicion. Even those who have no criminal inclination, immediately you are carrying a Nigerian passport and you have a Nigerian accent, you are already a suspect. It's not peculiar to Ghana, you know. So we need to ask ourselves questions, do a sober reflection, and know that when we are in a different country, we should comply with all the rules and regulations, with all the laws, and behave as responsible uh, uh, citizens. Some of these countries that we go to do business, like South Africa and Ghana, they are not, they are not like Nigeria. They, 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 they do things by the rule of law. They don't take a lot into their hands. They don't engage in self -help. And they want order. They want neatness. They want the society to be clean. They don't want you to start just jumping everywhere. You should not dump them. Right. If our boys and girls, or if our people are sitting in Ghana, I have turned their market to a new market. If they will not pay their taxes and levy, if uh, uh, they want to buy up the whole places without giving some consideration to the whole community, then you can always expect that there will be hostility. We have had such hostility towards Ghanaians in Nigeria before, too, when they had the economic challenge and they came to Nigeria. A few communities uh, accommodated them. But there are also hostilities. There are times when we also have them to return to their respective countries. So, the ball is in our cause. It is only ourselves that can polish our image and ensure that wherever we find ourselves, we are accommodated, respected, and that we comport ourselves in line with the rules, in line with the law, in line with the culture, in line with oh, the law and civilization that we meet on ground in the whole community where we have found ourselves. All right. 
Um, let's see something on the leadership uh, newspapers this morning. Bottom left, it says there, um, opposition unfair to the APC and President Mohamed Abouari. And that is from the Progressive Governors Forum. It said um, the opposition parties are portraying the APC and the president in bad light in spite of the uh, achievements of the current administration. And, of course, uh, Progressive Governors Forum are all the APC governors, if you remember them. Of course, uh, the Director General, Dr. Salibu, Salihu Lukman, um, is the one speaking here, saying that the opposition is unfair to the APC and President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, do you agree? No, I don't agree. Uh, while I concede that the APC government has been made some efforts, to revamp the nation's uh, infrastructure, especially in terms of road network, in terms of uh, reactivating the railway, and then the investments that they have done in, uh, have done in agriculture. These are very, very good steps. Even though those also have their own drawbacks, we have been borrowing money to build those infrastructures, and I have always argued when you borrow money, you invest the money in projects and programs and infrastructure that will be able to pay back the loan. But that is not what we have done. When you also look at the money that has been borrowed, more than 70% of it has ended up in the pockets of politicians, in the pockets of their businessmen friends, and also in running the political parties, especially the party at the center. What? Well, if you look at all of this, the quantum of money that has been borrowed, the infrastructure that you also have on camp, is they really correlate or do they really tally? There is a gap in between, in my humble opinion. There is a shortfall. Even in that area, we have to have seen more development that we have seen. You know, apart from that, you measure the achievement of the government from two or three perspectives. One is food security. Can we say that Nigerians are not hungry today? The answer or the truth is that uh, most Nigerians are hungry today. Even the president himself, in his independence broker, admitted that the prices of food stocks have skyrocketed and most people items have disappeared uh, from the market and uh, from the shares and all that. So if a nation is unable to provide food for its citizens, then what achievements are you talking about? Furthermore, look at the final state of insecurity. <laughs> Nobody is secure uh, uh, in any part of the country anymore. We have been paying attention to the Southeast. But what about uh, Southern Katuna? What about Kogi State? What about Ondo? Eh? What about even Nedo? Where his brother was killed? Virtually every part of the country is not safe. And it doesn't matter who you are. Look at the Dr. Kingly, a philanthropist, a committed man, a very, very young woman, a man who has put the services at the disposal of the Nigerian people without let or injustice and without discrimination. See the tragic way in which his life has been uh, snapped out. Well, we are failed in the area of food security. We are failed in the area of providing security for life and property. What achievement are we talking about? Also look at the final state of our educational system. Look at the final state of the health system. The medical people are just uh, calling off their spikes now. Asu is also gearing or Rwani to go on another spike. Right, uh, almost about two million uh, pupils graduate from secondary school on a yearly basis. And less than 750,000 of them who get admission into universities, polytechnic, and colleges of education. In some other countries of the world, people are being begged, people are giving incentives to go to universities, to go to polytechnic and all that. Here, our children want to go to school. We cannot provide the spaces for them to be able to educate themselves uh, uh, properly. So if you are able to learn who should be the leaders of tomorrow, you don't educate them what you expect. You should expect insecurity. You should expect banditry. You should expect criminality. So in that area too, the government of the APC have failed uh, 
very, very woeful. Also, look at uh, the environment like Lagos. See how dirty the environment has become. Also, look at the job. The International Labour Organization, then we have almost about 33% of people, unemployment, unemployed people. Nigeria is also being described as a uh, world capital of passport poverty in the whole world. In spite of the fact that this government says it's going to take 100 million people out of poverty. All right. In spite uh, of all their so, so we, we need in spite to wrap, of all wrap the other up here. Teams, they have, they have, they have rolled out. The truth right. of the matter is... Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Tunde Kolawole. ...and do what is expected to be done. They haven't turned around, they haven't done anything laudable for right. any Nigerian or any of the other political parties to begin to clap for them. Okay. To Nicola Wale, always um, interesting to listen to you, of course, on Monday mornings. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. And of course, we Thanks wish you a very interesting me. week ahead. We must tell the children the truth all the time. Absolutely. No matter who's horse is God. Mm. It isn't like that matters, but the quality you put into it. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, still on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, we're going back to 2017 to tell you what happened on this day in history somewhere in Niger Republic. We'll be back.